history's most famous and infamous people right into your home. I'm Miss Eileen at Shaver North Hills Library and my guest tonight is the first woman to have won a Nobel Prize and the first person to have won a Nobel Prize twice, the brilliant Marie Curie. She was born Maria Slomea Sklodowska in 1867 in Warsaw, Poland. She was the youngest of five children. Her family called her Manya. Marie married Pierre Curie on July 26, 1895, and they had two daughters, Irene and Eve. Marie graduated first in her class at the age of 15. Marie went on to study at the university. She was the first in her class in 1893 with a degree in physics and second in her class in 1894 with a degree in mathematics. Oh, Eileen, stop, stop, you're making me blush. <laughs> Gosh. She discovered two chemical elements, polonium and radium, on July 4th, 1934, at the age of 66, she died of aplastic anemia from exposure to radiation. Good evening, Marie. Thank you for joining us this evening. Eileen, how you doing? I am so excited to be here with you. I can't even tell you. I saw when Harry was on. Harry was on last month. You know Harry Houdini? Yeah. Yeah, and I just thought, oh my goodness. I wonder if they're ever going to ask me to come. I, I can't believe it when you called. I can't believe it. Well, thank you. I, I just, I'm excited. Do you like my science outfit? I do. I gotta tell you the truth though, I gotta tell you the truth. The thing is this, you all have a science show here, right? We do. See, I'm not into the science anymore. I loved it and science was my passion, but I retired from that and when I died, you know? So now I've been working in, in different kind of ventures, you know, which we can get into later. So I didn't have any science outfits, but then I knew that Rebecca and uh, that other like nutball, that they had a science outfit and, and I was excited to wear it. So I kind of feel like, you know, getting back into my old, my old digs here, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here. So okay. what's up? What do you want to talk about, girl? Okay. Well, is it true that both of your parents were teachers? My parents were both teachers. And I mean, they were incredible people. They, there's so many reasons why I love my parents. I was very fortunate. I had two parents who really were committed to helping all of us little rugrats become the people that they, they hoped that we could be, you know? And even back in, back in, it wasn't easy being a girl. And it ain't not so easy being a girl today. Don't let them tell you any different. But it was not easy being a girl. I mean, there were no schooling options after a certain point. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. That was rough. And the deal was this. We, you know, we were in Poland, okay? But the Russians had taken over. We're talking about Nicholas II, the Tsar of Russia, you know? Jet, did you ever read that book? Um, oh, what is the name of that book? Nicholas and Alexandria. Mm -hmm. It's a true book. I just love that book. I I didn't. I can't remember when I read it. I read it probably twenty years ago. It was a great book, but he was a real jerk, and he just you know it was forget about anything Polish. Forget about this. We weren't allowed to speak Polish. We weren't allowed to read Polish. We weren't even allowed to cook kobasi. It 
was ridiculous, okay? So it was rough being a woman. It was rough, a young girl. It was rough being, uh, you know, a, a, a Polish person under the oppression of the Nazi, of, of not the Nazi, well, I, you know, they seem like Nazis, but the Russians, because this was before that, that other evil empire came around. But there, and that's the thing. You know, don't let me get off on this. But the thing is, and I'm not a particularly, I'm not a religious person. I never was, okay? Both, both uh, Pierre and I, we, we, we didn't have any belief like in a, in, a, in a higher being, okay? Like science was our higher being. But I got to tell you, there is a power of love, okay? And that power of love, between people and between countries and nations, if we channel that power, that is bigger than any kind of radium, any kind of science we can do. And what happens when people try to mess with love and when people don't love one another, the junk happens like what happened in, in, with the Russians, like what happened with the Nazis, like what happens in many places around the world today. You know, that's the only bad thing about having been alive this many years. What year did you say I was born? I can't remember. You were born in 1867. Okay, so it's 1867. Hey, Kylie, you're mm. real good at the math. Mm -hmm. uh, 1867, and what year is it now? 2020. 2020. So how many years have I been around? About 153, I think. Yeah, so I've been around 150 some years, right? And it breaks my heart every time I see people not using the greatest tool that we have, and that's love, you know? So I'm just saying. So yeah, I didn't mean to get off, but sometimes I get off. But that's the thing. That's the thing. It was rough being a female back then trying to be into the science. And I was dedicated to my science. And I tell any of you out there, any of you, if they tell you that you can't be this because you're a girl, or you can't be this because you're a boy, or you can't be this because you're something else, you tell them that is not true. That is not true. And here's the thing. You find people who will tell you that is not true. You find people who will tell you you can be what you are. Because there's people out there to support you. Nobody does it alone. I thought I could do it alone. You know? I thought I could do it alone. I got hurt. I got, I got uh, passed over by this guy because I was just a nanny. Because I was working as a nanny so my sister could go to school, right? You know? Right, right. And then the deal was after she graduated, then I would go to school, okay? And I was a nanny and I fell in love with this guy and I thought he was loving me, right? And so he goes to his mother and he says, hey, can I ask Marie to marry me? And she's like, no, she's just a nanny. And she liked me. Now that's saying something. She liked me. But because I was a nanny, I wasn't good enough for her little prince. Well, whatever. I wish him no ill will. I wish no, her no ill will either. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I was done. I thought I can do this science stuff on my own, and I, you know, I probably, I probably could have done okay. But then I met that man. Oh my goodness! You know about me and Pierre, right? Yeah, yeah. I am telling you, we were like Betty White and Alan Ludden. We were. Like, everybody was like, there they are. And they didn't understand us because, you know, we were always, like, doing the science thing. We were calling each other, oh, my little element, my little Adam. Oh, you and your scientific method, you sent me. But we spoke the same language. And that was the language of science. And the language of love. You know, I, I think I think I went too far. Go ahead. What were you gonna ask, Ellie? Oh, How's your husband? He is fine. He is cool. fine. Okay. You know, we's related. I know that. I, I know. know. Did you know this, Kylie? No. Mm. Oh. My husband's mother 
is distantly related. So my husband's great grandfather is is related to um, the uncle. It would be my husband's great uncle. Oh my goodness! It's not even that distant. Him. It's not that distant. It's pretty close. Yeah, it is. That's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And actually, there's a family resemblance. I, I'm not even kidding. You should see the picture. Show it a picture after. I, I don't have. Them. You know what? <laughs> You know what we can do? We can put that, get, get that in the, put that in the show notes. So, yeah. So, but, so we know that women were unable to attend university in mm -hmm. Poland for higher education. Mm -hmm. What choice of alternate education for women you yourself during this time? Well, here's the deal. You could go to Paris because back then, we're talking the late 1800s, right? Right. Paris was a very different kind of city. I mean, you had those dudes, uh, you know, uh, the Impressionist guys, you know, you had like Camille Pissar, you had like Edgar, you had Monet, you had all them running around doing all kind of Toulouse, La Trek going on. It was a time of, of, of love and people like try and also just expression, you know. But yeah, women, I mean, it still was hard, you know. I mean, of all the thousands of people in the school, I think I was in number 20 or something like that of women you know but I went to the University of Paris uh, uh, the Sorbonne sometimes it's called you know yeah and I went there yeah yeah, yeah. so where do you I go? didn't pledge a sorority I knew that's what no. you were gonna ask me they didn't did they have, have I would have did they have sororities back then <laughs> I so, would have where did you work and do the experiments Marie well you know it didn't matter where I was working you know what I mean I would have I would have done an experiment in uh, in a milk carton if I could have. I would have done an experiment on in in one of those teeny tiny little houses. But we we were working in a shed back then, you know. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was crazy. It was it was crazy times. But we loved what we did, and that's the thing. When you love what you do. Even if it's hard, even if people get... You don't want to talk about being a woman in, in science. When when Pierre and I got the first Nobel Prize, right? right? Right. They didn't want to give it to me and Pierre. They wanted to give it to Pierre and his helper. Boo. You know, his helper. And here's the thing, even and Pierre was like, uh, we're not gonna be doing that. She's getting it or I ain't going. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So what they did was they said they would give it to me, but here's how they worded it. They put in there, they said, you know, they gave it to the other guy too. I can't remember his name now. Bechtel Bechtel Um Um Henry Bert that cool? Yeah, yeah. He wasn't the nicest guy. But anyway, him and Pierre, and it said, and Pierre's, you know, spouse or whatever, it is good that the Lord saw fit to give man a helpmate. Oh, my. Yeah! Can you believe it? Uh. Really? Tell me about it. So that's why I had to put up with, you know through all that but but I can't complain I can't complain I can't be bitter about it the only thing that upsets me now is that there's still young women and other people in minority positions that are fighting to do things in these non-traditional jobs yeah. and, and that's a thing and that's why I say if we act loving and we use the power and the science of love then we don't have to worry about that, and then we can accomplish so much more. Just love it, because that's the main thing. That's the main okay. thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you're the only person to win the Nobel Prize in two separate sciences. Can you describe the Nobel Prizes in 1903 and 1911? Well, the first one is the one to which I referred a little share. bit ago. Yeah. I had to share it with, I'm not had to, but right. I, I like to share, you know. Uh, but we shared it with with that guy who didn't Henry, think that radioactivity was mm -hmm. such a big deal. And he didn't coin the name. You know, Pierre and I got that for our contributions to this to radi to radioactivity. Because it was a big deal. 
I mean, it was a big deal. You might want to say it, it was, you know, radioactive. No. Uh, Harry's the funny one. I'm not. But here's the thing. There, so there was this song by Imagine Dragons, and it was called Radioactive. And I heard that song, and I thought, let's call this Radioactivity. I'm kidding. <laughs> it was by The Firm. It came out in the 80s. <laughs> no, I'm just not the 1880s, the 1980s, and we coined the term. We did. Then later, I got the Nobel Prize for for discovering two radioactive elements. Now you know what an element is. It's like a pure particle that can't be broken down. Like oxygen is one, nitrogen, hydrogen, helium. Um, Cadbury cream eggs. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Carbon. So the thing, Corbin Hannibal. So the thing is, I uh, and the one, the one I called it polonium mm -hmm. after Poland. Okay. And the other one I called radium. Now radium's been getting a lot of press lately. Okay. Right. okay. Kylie, I think I remember you graduated last year from the high school, right? Yeah. Okay, and they did a play in the spring. Oh, Radium Girls. Radium Girls. Radium Girls. Yes. Yes. Well, that's about radium. It, 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 we didn't know it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. We didn't know. How would we know? You know, and I, I do feel bad about that. I mean, that's horrible. Well, it's what, it's what got me, you know. But, uh, yeah, it was dangerous because at the same time, the radium uh, can fight cancers. Right. You know, like you might know somebody who's dealing with cancer and they get radiation, you mm -hmm. know, or radioactive isotopes put places to kill the cancer. Right. But it can also cause cancer. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I want to ask you, Marie, did yeah. you develop a portable x ray to treat soldiers during World War One? Yeah, see, that's the thing. And you know, I even went out to the fields and showed some of the guys, they was old guys back mm -hmm. then you know how to do this because you know you know say you're out on the battlefield and that bullet might be somewhere in you mm -hmm. you know you can't you might it takes all the time that it might take getting you back to the hospital you know wherever there's medical going on so this was portable and i showed them how to do that very yeah. good yeah it is said that your notebooks are still radioactive today. They are, they are, and and uh, that's the thing. And I'm not talking radioactive with gossip because I'm not a gossip. So a lot of people are saying, "Well, did you write about this one and that one? Is that why they're so hot and radioactive?" And I say, "No, you're crazy." <laughs> but no, yeah, they, they're still radioactive. I mean, we didn't know what we was playing with them, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, and it's also said that your body is still radioactive today. <laughs> Miss Eileen, are you teasing me? No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, I could stand to lose a few pounds, I guess, but I don't know. I try. I keep fit. I keep fit. Yeah. Oh, you mean with the radioactivity? radioactivity. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. It's under some, uh, they put, uh. Oh, I can't think of the word. A lead get to What? A lead coffin? Yeah, a lead coffin. Lead coffin. Yeah, yeah. So, so it doesn't pollute the area around okay. where I'm buried. Okay. Yeah. So what have you been doing since your death? Well, since my death, interestingly enough, I've been doing I've been doing all kinds of things. Um, I, I, I really, like I said, I love science. Science is my first, well, Pierre is my first love. Science will always be uh, important to me. Uh, uh, but, but Pierre is my first love. Well, my daughters, my daughter Irene, she also won a Nobel Prize. Did you know right. that? Right, she did. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It runs in the family. Yeah, it runs in the family. But I, that's why I want to bring it up because I'm super proud of Irene. But I'm also proud of Eve, too, because she was a great journalist. And, and, you know, she didn't die here till 2007. Oh, wow. I oh. know. 
that's crazy. She was like a hundred some years old. I mean, not as old as her mother, but but what I did first after I died was uh, hang out with my kid, my girls more, mm -hmm. you know, because losing Pierre uh, such an untimely manner that was hard for me, and I really realized how much family, how important that is. And right. the other thing that I that I want to say is, you know, what I loved about Pierre, one of the things I loved was how. He kind of had the same spirit that I did about the discoveries that we made. You know, yeah. he yeah. didn't want to cash in mm -hmm. and check out. You know, so I've been doing a lot of volunteer work. I did a lot of work with Jimmy Carter and Habitat for Humanity. I have been doing a lot with uh, um, Teach for America. You know, because I know, let, let me back. You might notice I don't have a Polish or a French or a Russian accent, right? Right. I just picked this up living in the States for about the last 80 years. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm working right now. I'm uh, I'm an understudy for an off-Broadway play. Okay. It's a play. Do you remember that show uh, with uh, Fran Drescher? Oh. The Nanny. The Nanny, mm. yeah. Right. Well, I had nanny experience, obviously. <laughs> So what I'm doing is that we're taking it to Broadway, but it's a combo of like a Pittsburgh and a New York accent mm -hmm. thrown in. Cause, Cause I'm playing a nanny who was uh, living in Pittsburgh and goes to New York. Here I am. And uh, you know, I'm doing the nanny thing and I'm trying to get on Broadway too at the same time. But that's what I've been doing. Yeah, wow. it's been great. So, yeah. Okay, what challenges did you face? I know you talked a little bit about this. What challenges did you face as a woman scientist? Well, you know, it was tough. I mean, I mean, even the achievements. Oh, well, let, let me let me put it to you this way. Up until I'd say, I'd say the early nineteen nineties. All right. Mm -hmm. If you read a book or learned about me. Do you know the name that you'd hear? Madam Curie. That's yep. the name. Like that's they d does that ring a bell? That's yes. true. Madam, does that ring a bell for you, Kylie? Yeah, I have yeah. several books here. Madam Curie. And what does that mean? Mrs. Curie. Yeah. So I didn't even get my name. And you know who would be upset with that more than I was? Pierre. Yeah. Cause he knew that we we were you know we were equal footing. That that's why we fell in love with each other, you know. And there were some things he was better at, and there were some things I was better at. It was a good, you know, up and down kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, what advice do you have to young girls today who want to be scientists? I would say, when you find if science is the thing that makes you fly that gives your spirit just that lift that makes you feel like you're radioactive <laughs> and glowing, then you stick with it. And you seek out people who are going to help you stick with it and help you get to where you need to be. You're going to do it, but nobody does it alone. You know what I mean? You know, you know, Frank, you know, Frank? Yeah. Sinatra, he sang that song, yeah. uh, I'll do it my, I did it my way. Yeah. He might have done it his way, but he didn't do it his way alone. He made mm -hmm. everybody else do it his way too. <laughs> because nobody does it alone. Nobody does. No person does it alone. Okay. You know? Well, what is next for you then? Well, next for me, I, I'm hoping the Broadway thing. I'm looking into that. I'm also, I've been really trending on the TikTok. Okay. Um, I've been trending on that uh, with a little song that I wrote. Um, do you remember that song? Um, I'm, I'm very involved in the election, and I don't want to get into it because I don't want to. I don't want to bring politics into it. But, but what I do, one of the groups that I, with which I volunteer, is just to watch the polls, just to make sure that that everything's going according to plan, so people can vote, you know, and safely, and mm -hmm. so people can vote. And so uh, I'm a poll watcher, right? Okay. Well, do you remember that song? I'm a girl watcher. 
I'm a girl watcher. Well, I wrote a song called I'm a pole watcher. I'm a pole watcher. And and that, that's that been on TikTok and that's been great. Well, yeah. good. So that's been cool. That's what I've been up to. Yeah. Good. yeah. And I, oh, I love that uh, Halloween Wars. <laughs> That's so good. You ever see that on a Food Network? I don't think I have. So. Oh, that's good. And okay. I'll tell you, those nuts that do that science show on uh, Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, I'm thankful for their outfit. Now I love them. All loved everybody. All loved to you. That's the main thing. Is that the science of love, I can't explain. But I'll tell you, I met that Pierre, and I knew that the best way the best way. And it doesn't have to be like a love where you, you get married. I mean, some of you out there, you're not ready to get married yet. You know, you may never get married, right? But that love, the love between friends, the love between brother and sister, the love between neighbor and neighbor, the love between stranger, and just do, just move forward in love. Because that's the key to science. Those are wise words, Marie. Yeah. I want to thank you for that. Well, I just really want to thank you for letting me come on. Uh, Kylie, I want to thank you, too. You, you, you're, you're a scientist. I'm a computer scientist. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You're a scientist. That, that's, and did anybody ever tell you, Kylie, you can't be a computer scientist? No. No, because they must have seen you with computers, because I heard about you. <laughs> Girl, you know all about the computers. You're crazy. That's excellent. But thank you. Thank you, Eileen. I hope to come back on. I hope to come back on. Okay. Well, Who's your next guest? Our next guest is going to be Jules Burr. Oh, Jules! So another you know, time. that's going to be cool. And that's some science going on there. Yes. Like science fiction. Oh, you can. But he. Yeah, Jules. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. He's he's great. Yeah. He's great. He's so, great. I want to thank you so very much for joining us this evening, Marie. You're so sweet. So, and thank they want to thank you for joining us at Who Is and please join. This is Miss Eileen at Shaler North Hills Library. See you next month. Then, bye bye. bye.